Good morning everyone. Thought I'd do a quick video um, as quite a few of you have asked about an update on the library bus. Um, still not finished but we're you know we're getting there. Um, we've been living in there for about, God, about eight months now. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff to finish on it but I did like a 90 day, 12 hour day uh, marathon to get it habitable last year um, as all the lockdown stuff that happened. Um, by the half actually ended up staying in my transit van which I'm going to do a follow-up video of that was filmed on Nate Murphy's channel uh, got a couple of years ago now uh, with the four portholes down the side my um, yes my girlfriend basically moved out of where she was living as we weren't currently living together because the library bus had been on the cards um, and uh, yeah she was living in there I was sleeping in the workshop um, so it was critical that we got the library bus habitable before the winter set in um, which we managed to do. Um, the final thing was taking it to Propex uh, who are based local to us and they kindly um, used us as a guinea pig for their new 6G heat air system uh, which is a you know as close to a domestic kind of thermostat heating system as you're going to get. It runs on uh, gas or electric we're currently plugged in and you, you can use up to three kilowatt of electric and then an additional three kilowatt of gas or up to six kilowatt on just gas. Um, and the electric is very cool because you can adjust it down to as low as 750 watts of electric and given the fact the library bus is so heavily insulated that has been sorry, that has been more than enough um, sorry if there is wind noise I have now got a cover for my GoPro by the way so if anyone says about wind noise I am trying um, but we haven't I haven't had a chance to go out and buy a new you know dedicated video camera that's perhaps got a bit better wind noise protection because GoPros are known for being crap um, but yeah so we uh, we got a gas tank installed at the end of that 90 day marathon it's a 70 litre on board tank which is in one of the kind of storage bins that was originally I think housing all the inverter and all the stuff for when it was a library and yeah on the other side there's the the, the heat air so it's yes yeah, a wicked bit of kit I mean I've, I've survived on a two kilowatt propex heater which a lot of you have probably seen the blue HS2000 uh, I might have the underbody equivalent the HS2211 and uh, yeah this is like the daddy of all the ones that they do I don't believe anyone else has actually got a six kilowatt equivalent they do a 4G a 5G and a 6G um, and given the size of the bus um, 6G was definitely the most sensible option but to be honest we probably could have done with just three kilowatt because the, the bus is so heavily insulated um, that's that we've barely even used it at six kilowatt I think probably one evening the whole winter actually so um, Anyway, I'll stop rambling on. Um, this is not a van tour, this is just a, an update on the bus because I will do a proper van tour on it when it's finished because I want to get it resprayed. The cab has not been touched really, it's just been vapour barriered so it's obviously a separate part of the van so we don't get any condensation in there. Um, this is just a kind of peek into our lives. Um, I'd appreciate, you know, any, any comments are always welcome of course um, but do keep in mind it's not finished. Uh, you can see the quality of our finished builds and this is well, I suppose to me, I, to me, I see every fault with it. So, you know, you guys probably think it's amazing. Oh, I hope you do anyway. But, um, but yeah, there's about a million and one things I still want to do to it. So, uh, do keep that in mind. And um, yeah, I'll just give you a quick tour around my other half. It's actually out of the gym at the moment, so it's probably the best time to do it. But I'll give you a quick peek. Um, so we're tucked away at the moment. You can't even see it normally. We will go. Where's the bus? It's kind of tucked away here. Um, looking a little bit green I did clean it last year it was looking lovely and clean but now it's looking a little bit sorry for itself but I will be giving it a, probably an oil change and giving it a full service so some of you may or may not know if you've watched the previous videos I bought this under the impression the body was pretty solid and it is the chassis is fantastic it's done 58,000 miles the engine needs to know for doing 400,000 miles quite comfortably uh, with regular servicing it was owned by Bromley uh, Borough Council in London but the walls were very poorly looked after. I don't know if it's a f at fault of the coach builder, but there's certain things since sort of dismantling it and reassembling it that have presented themselves as basically just poor practice when they built it, to be honest with you. There's, you know, sealant where there should have been welds and all sorts of stuff, really. But predominantly it was made up of ply and fiberglass, um, like a lot of these kind of big box vans are. So I had to systematically cut sections out and replace it with aluminium and all of the hassle that goes with that because you can't just cut sections of all that and refit them on. You know, there was angle iron behind that needed to be cleaned and primed and protected against rust. Um, and just the nature of rebodying something like this in this sort of environment, bear in mind I did this in this space here on my own, um, you know, with, with a you know, couple of extra pairs of hands when I needed to hold a sheet of aluminium in place. 
um, and a friend of mine helped me with the stairs that we've got. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's basically now got a little deck outside that I've built, so it gives Bear somewhere to mooch about, because we can't even out in the yard because there is a busy main road next to us and I can't risk him running out in the road obviously. And a friend of mine, one of the locals, builders, merchants, kindly donated us some, some fence panels for basically nothing, which is very kind of him. So we've now got a little veranda almost. And then, so we've got the stable door. That rope was originally to stop it from being able to swing all the way open, but just given we've got the deck now, I just kind of, it's been resting out. I've been using my dog walking boots as the door stop. Um, and that bar is just for Bear's foot towel to dry him off because he's so enormous and he makes so much mess. Obviously living in a tiny house, we've got to keep it clean. Um, and yeah, we've got a 70 litre LPG tank in there. Please excuse all the sealant, by the way. This is all Sabitac, which is marine grade sealant. You can apply it in, water, in salt water and is mega, mega strong. So you could, you know, I didn't even need to use fixings. Really. I could have just used the sealant apparently, but so you can see all of this aluminium. So the only thing original really is the roof. And given we aren't driving it currently, I'm now running it off of a big 48 kilo propane bottle. So we're just plugged in as you would fill up the tank at a petrol station. We're now connected to this tank permanently. So I can just change this bottle every sort of four or five months, which if you do the math is a hell of a lot cheaper than living in a house, I can tell you. And do bear in mind, I have a hot bath every night in this van, as does my other half quite often. Uh, we've got our little sort of deck chairs there, those trestles there, and then we have the barbecue up here. I'm planning to build something a little bit more permanent when the weather, or when the summer finally arrives, as I'm sure anyone in the UK knows it hasn't arrived yet. Um, and we've got another little gate, just so that we can get to the bins, and then the hose in the water filler. So yeah, all these rear lights are all new, new rear camera. Obviously all the windows are all new Dometic S4 windows. All new LED tail lights, LED license plate lights. Um, the piece that really caused the most damage before, when I stripped it off, this panel on the other corner was basically two parts of aluminium that had been sealed together, not welded, sealed. Um, so a friend of mine has since TIG welded that piece, so it's all one solid piece. And then when I originally stripped this body off, when I cut the wall here, it was like turning a tap on. There was literally a waterfall of water coming out, spraying in my face when I used the angle grinder. It was unbelievable. Um, so there was just no saving the body. So I'm, I'm, as much as it was an absolute nightmare and almost almost stopped me from converting it, to be honest, because you know I'm not a I'm not a metal worker by by trade by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but since rebodying it with aluminium, you know, rust is a thing of the past and we've done all the preparation work to sort of avoid it rusting underneath as well. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry to ramble, but there we are plugged in now, obviously on mains. Um, this is the electric cupboard. So you can see we've got a big Victron inverter, which as currently we're not using as we're plugged in and we've got a rotary switch down there that's per the same as our builds basically, so we're switched over. So all the sockets run directly from a fuse box there, uh, 12, box, uh, 12 volt fuse box there. Um, right, now for the cool bit. So we've got, these. this used to be a disabled lift, so this is all steam welded steel box section underneath, so that is all fully insulated with Celotex. Rather than creating a higher floor level like the other yellow library bus that's on YouTube, I decided I wanted that entrance in, because obviously now we've got space for shoes, boots and the dog stuff. And then all of our clothes, dressing gowns, a curtain obviously just for extra heat sort of protection because the door is probably the weakest point of the whole thing in terms of heat retention. Um, right, and then we've got the dog bowl. And then we've there's a pen in here which is too dark to see anything but I'll just open this up. We see it a bit better then. So that was, it's about 1.8 meters across and about a meter, 1200 deep. So that's more than big enough to bear to do a, we call it the dog turntable in there. And then we've got a boiler cover on the right, which again, it's too dark to see. Um, and our bed is up above the cab. 
which was all kind of looking semi-finished, but I just, we had problems with moisture up there because I hadn't fully vapor buried it and we had problems with moisture under the bed and this, that and the other. So I've since, um, this is version four of the bed system basically. So essentially what happened was I hadn't separated the cab from this part of the van. So you can imagine we were sleeping in here. Let me just take this bottle off the dog first. This is driving me mad. Um, so yeah, we had, condensation building up that I was totally unaware of um, so I decided to redo the bed area so we pulled the whole ceiling down so it's now totally separate but there is obviously no pretty bits up here yet um, this all will be cladded um, it may look tight to a lot of you but I'm six foot and I'm very used to climbing up and sleeping in now my other half loves it because it's so cozy up here and we've got a, a heater outlet in the corner there and there'll be little cubbies either side of the bed for both of us and sockets and lights and stuff hence the wires sticking out in a roof fan for each of us and the tablet on the wall was the intention as well so if we're both laying in bed we could even watch different stuff if we wanted to um got a 500 by 300 domestic sites window on either side so we always keep the bug, bug screens up um but we always keep those cracks so we've got a good through draft as we will have solar panels on the roof above us hence no roof fan or skylight um, we're planning to run 1500 watts of solar in this van or bus. I don't know what you should call it or I call it a tiny house now to be honest um, In here is at some point will be our compost toilet. Uh, currently it is just a boring camping toilet Fair enough As you can see the dog doesn't want me to film this video. So this is just our little laundry cupboard slash toilet um, this is the most probably unfinished bit of the van to be honest with you. Um, so I won't show you much more of that but so the bed is behind me with the dog pen and the cab, so from me forward is probably about six and a half meters. So we've got this really cool entrance step. Live edge cedar on the top there with Bear's bottle and our Alexa, which we got on a Black Friday deal. No, Black Fridays are not business deals. Right, there you go. She's way, constantly answering me back. Alexa, stop. I feel like a taskmaster saying that all the time. Uh, we've got a selection of plants in here, which all seem to be thriving, which was a good test actually, I thought of the how, how well the space kind of worked really, because if plants weren't living in here, then it probably would mean meant that we were doing something wrong. Um, so we've got a little entrance bit here. There's Bear. On guard dog mode. If he hears any noises in the yard. Oh. He's on it again. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm rambling now. So this is our little eating area. So to, both of us can sit here comfortably, and we can, you know, we can easily fit two plates, side plates, and then we can put all our condiments on the side. Uh, generally, this is my office at the moment. To be honest, I recently purchased a new laptop, which some of you, if you're into gaming, know what that is. It's a Republic of Gamer um, Asus laptop. So I love, I like to do my gaming as well, like a lot of people off grid do. Um, and we have our kitchen area, which isn't enormous, but it works really well for us. We've got two Thetford duplex ovens, uh, lots of kind of cupboard and drawer storage. And then the concept was that we tried to keep this top area. So we've got obviously a crate up here with like a pantry storage. We've got a a vent there just for, because obviously two ovens above each other there's a lot of heat that needs to escape so we made sure there was a vent um, and then up here is is our kind of daily kind of pantry almost I suppose as well as that and then we've got an open dish storage up here which can drain directly into the sink um, with this kind of stainless steel tray but so we keep our plates and stuff out there permanently unless we were to drive we'd have to put a, get a storage container um, and then at the back, a lot of people I think thought this was the bed, um, but in fact this is our sofa. So that, that the, this section here, that kind of part, folds flat. So there's hinges underneath, which again it's a bit dark in here, but that folds flat. And then you've got you've got um, surround sound powered by Marantz. Um, and then I bought a um, QLED TV. Sorry, the dog is driving me absolutely bananas. I knew if I tried to film this, he would become 
a distraction. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a big dog. Um, I don't even know why I love him, but he's, he's so, so loud. Um, and then, yeah, so we've got basically a day bed. I mean, we never really fold it down because it's so comfortable. We've got foam from GB Foam Direct. So it's five inch um, firm foam with memory foam on top. So it is basically a bed. Um, and I've got my kind of wireless keyboard and mouse thing so I can play. Um, Play whatever game we're fancy doing. My girlfriend's quite into her games as well, actually, so she says I'm probably quite lucky that she tolerates me playing on there. Um, so, yeah, we've got five channels surround the sound with a subwoofer down there. And then we've got a 400 litre water tank, which we fill up on a sort of fairly regular basis, depending on how many baths we have. But if we didn't have any baths, then that would last well over a week. And then we've got another heater outlet. Can't really see, but another heat, heater outlet there. Get on the sofa, you can see from this angle. So, my back's against the rear wall now, and yeah, the, we went for a massive butler sink just to really no compromises again. Really, I just thought if you know a small sink, you know, just means that washing up's a nightmare, and obviously, we've gone for big and bold in this bus, so why not make it as as homely as possible and have that option. Um, so yeah, obviously we keep everything at the top. Now we've got a CRX140 compressor fridge running off 12 volt. It does come with the uh, 240 volt fitting um, as standard because it's their largest uh, fridge in the CRX range. And we, again, haven't even grabbed the splashback yet. And there's still lots of finished, unfinished areas there. Uh, we do, by the way, if any of you ask, what I'm wondering, we use both these ovens all the time because you never need the same temp temperature when you're cooking a big meal. So, or you need to cook things at different times. So it is super practical having both of these. It wasn't just an extravagance. Um, and yeah, like I said, there's our tiny area. We're currently running off of one an acid battery down here because it's basically just being permanently charged and sitting in storage mode off the Victron battery charger. And um, we've got a GTEC Air Ram, a GTEC Hoover, sorry. It's like the K9 version, obviously, because we've got a big K9 who is now here. He's going in to do the turntable thing. In he goes. Never think you could hide a 60 kilo Mastiff in a, in a tiny house, could you really? But he's gone. He's vanished. Um, and in here is the bathroom, which I think last time I filmed it was really unfinished. There was just like nothing around the bath, no trim, nothing. Again, it's still unfinished, but we've now got our little sort of storage bit underneath. I've put another heat vent just there so it dries our towels. And then, sorry, the water pump switch is also there just because I've hit the, I need the tap in the bath recently, so it's constantly dripping. Um, so we turn that off at night. So we've got a towel rail there for both our towels and they're always dry which is great because the heat is just always just gently blowing hot air on it even if it's on low. Then we've got a Samsung tablet that we can watch when we're in the bath. And yes we have sat in this bath together, it is big enough. And then We've used the uh, U uh, sort of PVC hollow plastic panels, save weight, and also just because they're probably the most waterproof thing you could use for one of these bathrooms. Um, the ceilings have been painted, I think, since the last video as well, and it's all sealed around the edges as well. So all the condensation either goes out the window or it goes out the roof vent, which we've always got open probably this amount just to maintain a sort of moisture-free environment in here, as it is a tiny house, and there is essentially three, you know. Out of three people living in here really because the dog is you know weighs more than my girlfriend does um, and yeah I mean it's it's really home now bar the finishing touches really and anything we decide to sort of rejig um, yeah, I think can hear my girlfriend arriving hence the squeaking and the wagging there he is wag 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 <laughs> um, yeah so I will we'll do a full kind of tour like our, our normal videos.
sort of editing and probably less barking and all that sort of stuff. This is just a kind of real look into our our, our life, really. Um, you know, I know people like to see the, the real side of things rather than all these cinematic videos and stuff. And this is this is us, really. So. Um, yeah, it's the best thing I've ever done buying this bus, aside from the fact that the body was totally rotten, that was really not planned, but in the end it's actually meant we've got a much more solid, uh, you know, structure really, and aluminium obviously doesn't rust, so once it's all been re-sprayed and we've, we've done a kind of rubberized polymer paint on the roof, um, you know, it's, it, you know, I'm pretty confident we could drive under Niagara Falls and we'll be, you know, nice and dry in here, and we've got 60 to sort of 90 mil Celotex closed cell insulation in the ceiling, and then 25 millimeters in the floor, and 60 in all of the walls. So it's super warm in here with very little heating on. Um, given the size of this, you know, we can actually use only one and a half kilowatts most of the winter to keep this warm, providing we haven't got loads of windows open. Um, obviously, we've got to ventilate if you shower and bath. So, guys, keep this in mind. If you live in a house, or if you live in a bus, or you live in a van, if you're showering, you're cooking, you've got to keep windows open. Um, it's worth spending the money on the gas, on the electric, to to maintain, you know, to, to protect your home, really. You know, wood is a natural product, it's going to expand, it's going to, you know, mould and things like that. So if it's not properly ventilated, you're going to have problems. Um, it, you know, and you have, you have problems in apartments, so... Um, sadly, I used to be an estate agent and I walked into so many apartments where it was mouldy and things like that. It was because they were drying clothes in the, with no windows open. Um, but anyway, um, my girlfriend's just come back, so I will end the video now. And um, yeah, I will do a full tour once the van's finished. And um, me, Bear and my girlfriend will see you on the next one. Cheers.